What's going on, guys? We finally got it. Final patch notes for Season 3, Patch 2.6 for D2R. Launching February 16th at 8 p.m., we can hop on into Sanctuary in a brand new season and get after it and slay demons and hopefully create some very powerful adventures, right? If you have nobody to play with for ladder launch, if you have no team, I encourage you to check out the description. I am going to link a Discord there. Um, you're more than welcome to hop on in, meet some amazing and great people that also enjoy the game you love. Whether it's on console or PC, it doesn't matter, we're there with you. Um, and also in the description is going to be a link to this blog post and any build guides or any build references that I have for the Assassin Boazon uh, Druid if it's there, it's all linked in the description. Give it a shot and ultimately let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Absolutely, I want to know what you think. Without further ado, let's hop in the video and see what Season 3's got for all of us. When you dig into the blog post a bit, one of the most meaningful things that's coming out of Season 3 or Patch 2.6 is the eight new rune words. And those have been edited from the development team, so hats off to those guys for giving us at least their, their ear and listening to like what we think. That's really important, um, and I'm happy to see that that happened for us. So let's dig into the rune words here. Bulwark, as you can tell on your screen, not change at all. Bulwark was just fine. It's, a, it's an it's amazing helmet for the mercenary. At the beginning of the latter season, if you don't have any uh, Tal Rasha's mask or you haven't hit Vampire Gaze or Andariel's Visage, Bulwark stands alone as one of those Merc helmets that's going to keep him alive pretty well. Also great for melee characters. Um, and this is in any helmet, so you can have a Pelt, a Druid Pelt, or you can have a Barbarian helmet with three sockets that could host Bulwark as a rune word. Uh, that's pretty good. That didn't change from uh, from the previous iteration, so that's good. Coming down to Cure, Cure is a little bit more interesting because now Cure has a level 1 Cleansing Aura when equipped, and Cleansing Aura is actually quite decent, and it also has a now reduced Poison Length um, amount by 50%, previously 75 So where would you use Cure? I'm not saying Cure is the answer to everything, but Cure might be good for a Necromancer, like a Summon Necro on a, on a Mercenary. But I, do I see any characters strutting around with this outside of that? I don't really see too many using it. Maybe uh, an energy shield or like a Nova Sorceress may use Cure. That's an option. Ground did not see any play, any updates, which is nice. Ground is still a, a pretty decent viable option for any smiter going up against Mephisto, the Uber Mephi, because of the lightning absorb and lightning resist. So that's nice to see. Hearth did get a semi-attractive looking update and cannot be frozen, but I really don't see myself using this helmet either way. It, it is nice for a Shale Io Thull combination to get CBF or cannot be frozen, but again, um, if that's something I'm looking for down the road, a Chamrune solves that or Ravenfrost, in addition to several others, but those are some more popular uh, options in that slot. But it's nice to see something. CBF definitely made Hearth a little bit more attractive, but I still don't see myself using that personally, but it's okay. Moving on, Temper, same deal. Temper looked like one of those helmets for the Mercenary. You could even use it on a, on a barb if you want to, or any melee. Um, in particular though, I see like most real life use cases Maybe a mercenary uses this for a barb that's farming Travancall. Maybe a barbarian actually uses this just because the hydras in Travancall when you're magic finding can be pretty lethal. So fire resist to 40 to 60 in that fire absorb, that hasn't changed. That's still a good application of that helmet. So let's take a look at hustle and how it affects body armor now. So for a Shale Co and Eldrune, you get 65% faster run walk. Now doubled to 40% increased attack speed was previously 20%. Plus six to evade, which is 40% chance to dodge attacks while moving. If you're standing still, you're not getting any benefit from this, but while you're on the move, right, you can dodge any sort of melee range attack. This also affects area of effect attacks at plus six to evade. Pretty nice. In addition, 10 all res. Now pretty formidable body armor. Is it as good as treachery? Could be better. At least you have something to, to try out and experiment with in a new season. Might be kind of nice. 65% faster run walk is quite good, and 40% IES is great for a melee character or even a mercenary, in my opinion. Taking a look at the Hustle rune word inside of a weapon, what do you need to know? The developers tried to make Hustle more of a primary use weapon and not a swappable weapon like I tried to exploit in previous versions uh, in these videos uh, using the Boazon. It was, it, it, was, it was very clear to me that we could have a Boazon with uh, the biggest impact or, or a throw barb getting the most impact out of Burst of Speed. Uh, those classes just really performed with a level 9 Burst of Speed. No longer the case. As you can tell here, it's now same thing, a 5% chance to cast a level 1 burst of speed, but you also get a level 1 fanaticism aura. In addition, the base damage of the rune word went up to 180 to 200 on that spread instead of 130 to 150, and we're talking about the damage range there. So what does this actually mean, right? So if you look at fanaticism, a level 1 fanaticism being applied to whoever's wielding this, whether it's you or a mercenary, the radius is 7.3 yards, the party damage goes up by 25%, your damage, if it was you using the weapon, goes up by 50%. Your attack speed's up by 14. In addition, plus 40 attack rating. Burst of speed at level 1 is going to give you 21% EIAS, which is a whole different calculation. Um, increased run walk speed to 23% in a duration of 2 minutes or 120 seconds. So the rune word for hustle by the developer's um, intent is very much something you're going to use now or self-wield. Is, is it a good option? 
in a bow, it's okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Using this on a mercenary, maybe this goes into like a mythical, ethereal mythical sword for a frenzy barb and like, you know, you could have Lawbringer and, and Hustle as an idea. You could have Crescent Moon and Hustle. Who knows? We'll have to give it a shot and test. But uh, if their intent was to use this as a weapon, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Their, their base damage went up and this dual, this duplicity of two auras is kind of interesting. We'll have to test and see how that goes. Uh, definitely different than what it used to be. So let's take a moment to talk about Mosaic in Season 3, Patch 2.6. It's one of the most um, impressive updates that the developers did, in my opinion, for, for all of the classes, which is why I'm calling this the Season of the Assassin. I really think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't try an Assassin this season. It may not be for you, so you don't have to do it, but I'm going to give it a shot. This looks pretty appetizing, and here's what it is, right? So now you have a 50% chance per claw to not consume a, a charge when using a finishing move. That's a massive update. And I want you to use the lens that we're using two claws going forward. We're going to go through a build here just after. So imagine, and I'll read it out this way, 100% chance for finishing moves not to consume charges. When a finishing move is executed this way, it now refreshes the expiration timer of the stack. So instead of losing a charge every 15 seconds, now you have all of your charges going for all of your builders and your spender is no longer spending, so you're operating at peak efficiency. In addition, each claw will give you a total of, when combined, 7% each per claw for a total of 14% life leech uh, when you're when you're when you're leeching up building up and then a total of 8 to 15 elemental damage per claw for what would be on a perfectly rolled range 16 to 30 additional elemental damage. So how does that look inside of a build or something like that? So I've done I've done tons of tons of work making these builds and stuff. And so I've got a, a level 99 assassin here that we used on the PTR testing. Um, Happy Feet here will be available in the description below. But imagine these are mosaic claws instead of Bartux, okay? I've got a build here using G-Face with a Chamrune inside. Chains of Honor and Archon Plate. You don't need to use Enigma because you do get Dragonflight, which is a nice utility spell or ability to kind of navigate around the map and engage with content without needing the dependency of Enigma for teleport. Um, I am using these Death Grip Crafted Gloves, plus two to Martial Arts Skills, 20 IAS, Life Leech, Crushing Blow. You get some Life and Strength, which is always nice, and you can craft these up. I'm using a Bull Cathos uh, Band. I believe there's two of those for the plus to Skills and Life Leech, and additional plus to Life based on level. I am using Arachnid's Mesh because there's not too much belts that are better than this. Plus one to Skills, slowing the target, some FCR helps as well. Uh, so we'll take all that. We're also using Mara's Kaleidoscope. And for the boots, we've got Upped Gore Riders. So if you don't know about upping things, you can take Gore Riders and using certain recipes, you can upgrade uh, the Unique to a Myrmidon Grieve base. And why that's important is your kick damage goes up to 83 to 149. And as for the skillers here, we'll break this down. I'm using a Greater Rift which is like more fire damage on things that are fire immune, as well as just a few skillers, okay? And then you have a torch and an Annihilus. And yeah, they're perfect here for this example, but you can find some too. And they don't have to be perfect. The Mercenary would be using Andariel's Fortitude, and then also uh, an Ethereal Mancatcher that makes Infinity. So Infinity giving us that um, constant, that, excuse me, that Conviction Aura, which is always helpful when you're doing fire damage. And fire damage is what Dragon Tail is going to do. So let's break down the build at level 99 and see what this thing could be um, with all these crazy elemental buffs to it, okay? And 100% chance to not use a finisher. And don't worry too much about the damage, but we'll go through what these percentages look like, and it's kind of gross. So, coming in at level 46 would be a Tiger Strike, a charge-up skill that will give you 3,000 enhanced damage. Plus 3,000 damage, okay? Um, one point in a Cobra Strike gives you the ability to leech with three charges 340% while kicking. With it. And let's read it here. Consecutive hits add life and mana stealing to finishing moves, must use a dragon finishing move or a normal attack to release the charges. So the dragon move we're going to be opting in for is Dragon Tail, which is a dragon finishing move that will give us 695 increased attack rating and a total additional fire damage of 950%, whilst leeching 340% life and mana. That's just awesome. Like, it's just so tanky, it takes care of itself. Moving into the Shadow Discipline side, Claw Mastery. Level 36 gives us attack rating bonus of 380%, damage increase of 175, and a 23% chance to crit, which is nice. Uh, the One Point Wonders go into Psychic Hammers, Cloak of Shadows, and Mind Blast. I've also got enough Weapon Block, or Claw Block, to give me 60% because anything past this, it gets really uh, expensive to put skill points into. So at 60% chance, I'm okay with that. Burst of speed to the max. Again, we're using 57% uh, faster attack speed and run walk of 66% increase through burst of speed. One point in fade for Uber Mephisto or very difficult content. One point in fade to add that bleed if we need to, or excuse me, that poison application to prevent monster heal when we need to. As a one point wonder, one point in a fire blast in the trap side, one point shock web, one point charge bolt, one point in lightning sentry. <clears throat> Pardon me, a little bit sick as we're making this video. And as many points as we could uh, feel free to add to Death Sentry, uh, just to give us some radius on our attacks. So, 
All this together, I think this build would be pretty nice to give a shot. Um, again, Chains of Honor, best chest you can get. Put this all together. You can't really look at the damage, so I'm not going to bother showing it to you. But the link in the description will be listed. Quite, quite good in my opinion. I think not dispelling charges with a build like this on Player's 8 content will be quite formidable. Um, the fact that you get to do some AoE damage when you kick is also very good. In the, in the video here in the background here, you can see like it's it's pretty great, man. This thing was good before. Now with 100% chance to not lose those charges, Mosaic's up there. Just up there. And um, I can't wait to give it a shot. And hopefully you're eager to try that too. Cascading down to Metamorphosis, the only additions that, the we, that we got out of this great helmet already is 30% increased attack rating bonus, which is fine. 20% before was good, 30 is even better. We'll take that. They also moved out the chance of crushing blow out of the uh, Mark of the Bear requirement, so now you just get 25% chance crushing blow on the helmet. Um, their intent from the developer's notes was that they wanted to make Metamorphosis the best in-slot helmet for a Shapeshifter Druid. I think that's pretty pretty true plus five to shape-shifting skills is already huge can't be frozen some clean resist again crushing blow regardless of the form is nice all that attack rating and 40 percent life this will be in my opinion the go-to in a in a correct pelt the go-to best in slot helmet for any shape-shifting druid and i encourage you to give it a shot if you like that although i would say it would have been nice to see shape-shifting druid get teleport the ability to access teleport from an enigma chest and the reason i'm saying that is if you play multiplayer games like i do oftentimes we're, we're colliding with content in the game and we're teleporting through walls as groups of players whether it's paladin sorceresses zons right you name it but that druid always gets left behind so whenever we're doing terror zone content and i use the tower as a good example druids just can't play with us because they can't keep up because unfortunately whenever they're in a shifted form like werewolf or werebear they're unable to cast teleport they they can't utter the they can't utter the words to get that teleport out through enigma which i think needs to be changed just one guy's opinion, but if you gave shape if you gave shapeshifting druids the ability to teleport, it would not be the end of the world. It would allow them to participate even more, which is what Sunder Charms gave other versions of the class, like Fire Druid, right? They can now play some more and in other classes as well. But let's get druids the ability to teleport in shapeshifted forms, please and thank you. That'd be huge. Another aside, just my opinion. It'd be nice to see other classes get access to Metamorphosis to try and just augment some of these effects, like giving another class the ability to get some Mark of the Bear on a barb or something, or, or, or so on and so forth. Like, take Metamorphosis away from just Druids and let us kind of experiment with that awesome new rune word with other classes instead of um, cancelling out the ability to cast spells while using Metamorphosis. Another subtle aside is like a hoorah moment. So we've got some additional areas that are now terror zones. Ancient tunnels is fantastic. That's that's a really good addition in my opinion. Um, beyond that, Kura sewers had to go. If you ever played the Kura sewers, it was it was basically rough. Like it was no there was no density, and I'm so happy to see that that's gone. Um, another subtle thing here: when Bloody Foothills, Frigid Highlands, and Abaddon is now in rotation, that's really cool. So me and you and everybody else, we can now do Eldritch Shank if we want to, and rinse and repeat. So early in ladder season play, if you've killed Bale on Hell, you can get yourself into a terror zone and grind like. Go kill Shank, then go kill Eldritch, and then go back down to where Shank is and see what all the corpse explosion bodies or all the all the dissolved bodies from Shank's explosion produced for value. Um, if you're a melee character, right? It's hard. It's hard because you don't have access to kill all those mobs as fast at the beginning of ladder season. But now that this is now one zone that's terrorized, that's actually quite a quite a nice benefit. Killing both of those guys at least is good. In Abaddon, I totally agree, as well as the Pit of Asheron. Uh, those red portal zones are pretty sexy looking places. It's nice to see them get some love now as well. One of the other standout things that makes the Assassin the go-to class for Season 3 is the fact that Assassins or Trapsins now also get the uh, the negative enemy resistance benefit like everybody else did. So, knuckles to the Assassins out there, we finally got there, which is which is cool. Um, this has been holding that back for quite some time. I think this is an extremely beneficial uh, addition to the Assassin Trapsin build, and I can't wait to see what the community comes up with for flame like fire trap based builds i'm eager to see how that works whether you're going to use like a six faceted sword and a phoenix for fire or if you're going to just let rip with those lightning centuries man um corpse explosion does not scale up on players eight so i'm always thinking about high player count games when i'm when i'm reviewing these and how that might impact community play but uh i mean hats off to the devs thank you so much because we needed this they needed the assassins needed this update and now you finally got it and speaking of things, uh, the Cold Sorceress here. So Cold Mastery now applied a one-fifth effectiveness after an immunity is broken. That's that's kind of rough, but um, it's not the end of the world. You're still going to be just fine. The game is still all good until you suddenly sunder or break an immunity on a target. Then you then you receive the penalty of one-fifth effectiveness from Cold Mastery. Uh, however, if I go into a D2 cheat sheet here and I bring up Doom, 
let me check out the Doom Rune word here. Yeah. So in a five socket axe, combining Hell, Ohm, Um, Low, and Cham, which is quite expensive, you can then apply a 40 to 60 negative enemy cold res at, at no penalty to you. So instead of using a Death Fathom or a Hodo or things like that, if we try something by shifting the meta just a little bit, uh, I think Doom might be the go-to in, in a decent base for a sorceress to make sure you're still dealing maximum amounts of damage. It's true you're only going to get plus two to skills instead of plus three from other options, but hey, I got you. As much as I can, as much as I can. Navigating down to Terror Zones to sort of wrap up what this post is about, they fixed terrorized treasure classes for certain super unique monsters and bosses. They also fixed an issue where Act Boss's quest treasure class would sometimes be used instead of terrorized treasure class. I think that's to fix Andario, by the way, which is a pretty solid update. Um, and again, they fixed an issue where the current Terror Zone was not properly marked in the Waypoint menu when using Legacy Graphics. Whoever you are, you sneaky Pete, you caught them and they fixed that for you, so, so you're welcome. So overall, I think uh, Season 3 Patch 2.6 is a great reason to try a shape-shifting druid um, maybe get your hands on um, on hustle for like a, a mercenary or maybe even a barb try a boson see that feels for like a primary weapon maybe it's maybe it's great you have a lot of options for the boson already but i do think that a for for a for a act five frenzy barb i think mythical sword will be your base ethereal mythical sword three socket to try hustle and then maybe a lawbringer on offhand to see how that feels on your on your mercenary but let me know what you're going to try out and again Make a martial arts in this season, make a traps and see how it tastes. Play, 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 get to the end game and push those classes, see what you think. And I can't wait to see what we uh, what we come up with. Fire trapsons looking real nice, hopefully. And um, and then of course the shape-shifting druid, man. Have fun. And you guys can absolutely do the Ubers. All you guys are gonna slay. So enjoy um enjoy D2R patch 2.6 season three, because after this one, we've got Diablo 4. And I can't wait to see you guys on that side of Sanctuary. Barbs unite, right? Much love to you guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. And so sorry for being sick during this uh, review. But hey, life don't quit. Gotta push forward. Much love to you guys. Adios.